so this is the second volume of, uh, of, a, of this series, um, which come out as part of uh, the media architecture Biennale. So this is about the fourth book um, out of uh, the media architecture Biennale. Um, so this has been a kind of long project um, with my colleague Kitty Glenda and several other uh, authors. And uh, the idea around this book was for it to be a, a, a monograph that showcased the different types of concepts, methods, and then also practical examples of media architecture. Um, and so, yeah, we've been working, this as part of the team over the last um, 18 months. And finally, so today, this is the first time Glenda and I have actually felt the book. <laughs> We've seen the digital copy, of course, but uh, it got shipped from uh, Europe straight to here um, once it was finished. So, um, you know, it's pretty informal, and um, we would really like a great opportunity to chat with everyone about this and the work that we've done. But uh, what Glenda and I are going to do is just kind of give a quick overview of what the different sections of the books are, of, of the book is. So, um, yeah, I think we'll do that. So, the, the first part of it, showcasing particular concepts in relation to the architecture and then kind of go from there. So Linda, why don't yes. you tell us about the different concepts that the book's going to cover? Yes, so the concepts cover uh, chapters including buildings as screens, networked space, the city as software, activating public places, collaborative city making, urban commons, autonomous agents, and more than human futures. So these concepts have been discussed, have been researched, have been presented, have been written about um, in different venues and you know, amongst this community. Uh, so some of the key sort of thought leaders in the NAB community have written these chapters and collaborated um, by providing these uh, key chapters in the, in the concept section. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so as Glenda said, uh, the, this type of work is based on extensive research within this field of media architecture. So, yeah, the, 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 the people that contributed to these chapters have actually uh, done a lot of work in that space. But what we also wanted to do was, okay, we're talking about these, these particular concepts. Uh, you might have seen some of the media architectural boards and the projects, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But what we also wanted to provide was, well, what are some of the methods, practical methods, that you might need to undertake to address some of these concepts that have been done? So as part of this project, we also developed uh, 10 methods. Um, and these methods kind of have a description of what it is, and then gives you a practical step-by-step -step process of actually how you might use that. And our intention was that um, so the previous books uh, have definitely showcased the architecture projects, but it's more showing the great bits around it, which is excellent. We've, we wanted this resource to be used not only as uh, an academic text or something that a practitioner could use, but also the methods that they could apply for future media architecture projects. And future research. And future research as well. So it's not just for academics, it's not just for practitioners, <laughs> it's for everybody. So, so Glenda, what were some of the methods? So that some of the methods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we have urban frogs, middle art workshops, which we may have yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actor mapping, intermediation practices, annotated portfolios, digital storytelling, virtual urban prototyping, spatial prototyping, creating interest, and exploring social impact. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so those are the kind of the two main meaty uh, written parts. Um, you know, beautiful imagery as well. But uh, a, a key part of the, of the books, but also what part of the Biennale, is the projects that are submitted for the awards. So uh, these books normally come out after 
every two biennales. Mm -hmm. So there's a significant amount of projects to, uh, to put in the book. What happens is it goes through a real um, vigorous process. One, people are submitting to the Biennale, but then it goes through a jury, a jury, and then from there, um, they're selected. So Glenda's actually, um, the last two Biennales has been involved in the jury. Perhaps give us a you know, quick yes. idea to you know, what yeah. that involves and how they eventually ended up in this book. Right, so the awards is uh, open for practitioners, researchers, um, architects, artists, designers to submit their project to the awards. Uh, and the, I guess the, the sections or categories. Uh, the categories, thank you, um, that are included in this book summarize the categories that were used in the awards of 2018 in Beijing, mm -hmm. and then the 2020-21 uh, and maybe that was a virtual event, but also mm -hmm. in Amsterdam. And so there were a couple of changes that happened between those two years. So we have the animated architectures, and there are two, there are six projects in there, so that was represented in both of those Biennales. In 2018, we had a category called money architecture, <laughs> and um, due to um, several reasons, <laughs> <laughs> In 2020, that category, or 2020, 2021, that category was replaced by more than human architecture. So there's three in money architecture and three in the more than human architecture. And, by, and what I mean by three is that there are three projects included in this book. Mm -hmm. And they're not just that those were the only ones submitted, those were the shortlisted mm -hmm. and also the one that was the finalist, the one that was awarded um, in those, and it will be, uh, yeah, in the awards for them. Um, the other category is participatory architecture and infrastructures, and that has six, so that means that there are 2018 and 2021. Spatial media art, also in both of the MADs, and future trends and prototypes, which also has uh, projects from 2018 and 2021. Um, so there's a little bit of a discussion about the um, categories themselves and what they mean and how they change between those two media architecture biennales. Uh, so we've got beautiful images that were you know, included in the website and also provided by the practitioners or the designers and architects or you know, the, the people responsible for these amazing projects. I think we have some people here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so the, it's, it's a really beautiful compilation of all of that work. Um, and being part of the jury is such a delight because you get to see, you know, the richness of the work that comes from a real uh, diverse city across the, the globe. You know, there's um, entries that come from all over the place, which is really incredible. And um, the jury consists of, yeah, a mix of practitioners, of architects, of academics, designers that are also representative of those global regions. And we have a bit of a, a you know, it's all sort of submitted and we get allocated to our categories um, and we do our, we, we collaborate with, um, we get our category and we kind of discuss what we think and then we all come together and we do a session where we present our, um, I guess, shortlist and we go through a bit of a moderation process and um, so it takes a few, for me being in Australia, it was a few late night calls to go through the process. Um, but it was a lot of fun and really exciting to see who the finalists are. So tomorrow we will see the awards for this year, and yeah, it will be exciting. That'll be in the next book. Yeah, that'll be in the next book. Yeah. <laughs> that we won't be doing. <laughs> not just Glenda and I, but from a, um, a number of people. Um, we have key authors listed, so those were people that wrote both in the concepts and the methods chapters. But we also have uh, a series of contributors that might have um, just uh, worked on um, a method or a bit of a concept. So we've acknowledged everyone um, in our book 
uh, for that. Um, one last kind of thing and plug and we'll hand over um, to the next person was we, uh, as part of this, we have a companion website uh, made. So um, our companion website um, has the, or the marketing for our, our new book on the front page, which is um, quite well done. Um, but what we also wanted to make available, particularly for, uh, for students, was the methods. So all of the methods are actually available, um, including, I might just click on our method, why not? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they yeah, just randomly came across this one. Um, so yeah, we, we have you know, the method description uh, and then the steps to undertake that particular method. Uh, and then our incredible uh, author says, oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> uh, uh, all our authors and contributors uh, are on that um, website. So that's available. Um, so again, thank you very much for the opportunity um, for Blunder and I to chat with you today. Um, we have uh, copies, I think, pretty much for everybody that's here today um, to give to you, um, provided we don't run out, and we'll also have you to sign. Um, I must also, <laughs> um, also acknowledge that Mario Swagamola um, is also one of our authors who's here. And Dave. And Dave. Mm -hmm. so, um, thank you very much, everyone.